Wow. Wow, that was amazing, everybody. Wasn't that amazing? How amazing was that? That was so amazing. I know. Yeah. And uh Righteously really. amazing. Righteously. Righteously amazing, yes. Uh Yes, absolutely. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. We are Rumble Pop Live. Sorry, we're a little bit late. Just a few minutes here. Um, I had to. Uh, I had to get my drum kit ready. You think I'm kidding? Oh no! It's back. <laughs> Wait, is that real? <laughs> oh god! Whoa! It's oh, back, god, everybody. Right mind gave you a drum set. <laughs> My mom and dad. <laughs> oh, no way. The fools. <laughs> they had no idea the power they were imbuing into me. Like, uh, you know, it's like uh, I, I could feel it surging inside of me, this evil, like, entity. <laughs> it was manifesting. Yeah, I'm possessed. That's just what it is. I'm pretty sure. Possessed, possessed. by a demon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin's like, I'll exercise it. Next thing you know, we're doing like power lifts and squats and reps and. And Bonnie also has uh, certified uh, demonic extraction powers as well. Oh really? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Get some sage up in there and. Uh, See. Get some holy water and. And the and the final the final talent you have, Bonnie, in this type of situation, a Cobra Kai kick. Oh, I didn't know. Yes, I didn't know she had any of that. I'm, I'm impressed. Maybe not a cobra hey, kick, but more of the crane kick. <laughs> yes, either. you see, that way you kick the demon out of him. Kick the shit out <laughs> right of that demon. <laughs> that wicked demon. Wicked. You know, one of my favorite things was in the first Ninja Turtles when they were watching uh, a cartoon on TV at April's place and Mikey was getting all into it and he was like, oh, come on, come on. And the, like, the turtle was trying to catch the rabbit and he was like, just ninja kick the damn rabbit. <laughs> I, was, I was like nine or ten or something and I friggin' lost it. I was like, this is the best movie in my entire life. It's about the, the original movie? That probably was true up until that point. Yeah, yeah, the 19, what, 90? 1989, 1990. 1990, 1990. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty great film for for its time, for sure. Like for yeah, and the second one for us. With, with, with Vanilla Ice, go Ninja, go Ninja. Oh go. yes, yes, yes. That was awesome ninja, as well. Ninja. So <laughs> filled with awesome. Uh, like, geez, uh, I'm gonna do some stuff in the background here, and Kevin's gonna do some intros. If that's cool, Kevin, uh, to allow me um, my space, my personal space, to be able to do this. I appreciate that very much. Your personal space. Wow. Yes. It, it seems like it's it's so personal that you, you need to have like a private moment or something with your equipment. I am in a new room now. I don't know if you guys noticed the uh, prison that I'm inside now. Yeah, that's apparently. true. The room is like a blank. It's like a blank slate behind you. Yes, it does look rather uh, prison-y. And I do apologize about that. But uh, I wasn't sure what to put up on the walls. This is my new office, my new streaming office. Uh, so I'm going to be doing... Uh, live shows for for sales. Uh, uh, I'm gonna do uh, uh, OnlyFans content, so I'm gonna I set up an OnlyFans wow. account. So I'm gonna oh be doing goodness. that. It's it's just uh, just uh, you know uh, thighs, legs and thighs and stuff. Kevin. I'll be your I'll be your first subscriber, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Incredible>. Woohoo! <laughs> and by the way, I guarantee you, Chris will give you one hundred dollars a month for your shoulders and and thighs and and calf muscles that he wants to look at. Whatever happened to the foot files? Jeez, uh, Bonnie, like you were one of four people that really enjoyed it, and uh, I enjoyed it too. I had a hell of a little fun time doing it because uh, I was bored at work, and it was so fun <laughs> and easy to do. Like there was not literally nothing. I would go to work for eight hours, do one hour of work, and sit around for seven hours. It was that bad. Like it, it was, was that bad? I worked at a tea and Chinese herb company and we got bought out by a porn company. I shit you not. We got bought by a porn company <laughs> in Chatsworth. So they moved us from off of Pico and La Brea to Chatsworth. And uh, that is exactly what happened. Like it was uh, porn central. And so basically I had an office and right next to me they would film. So when I would be talking to people like very quietly about their health and stuff, you would they'd be banging on the walls and shit and this chick's moaning and screaming and the dude's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, take a baby, take a baby. And I was like, I'm I'm so sorry about that. Now, 
about your erectile dysfunction that you're having. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how do you, how do you talk? What do you do in that instance? How do you get like, you're screwed. <laughs> like that person's pissed already. They're like, there's Did someone banging behind increase? you. I know it. No. Did the company revenues increase in any way? No, they actually ran us into the ground and out of business within two years. So uh, congrats to them for their tax write-off. I hope they enjoyed it. Oh, I'm sure they did. They I'm did. I'm sure they did. Uh, so basically, right. uh, yep. I, I've I've done the background stuff, Kevin. Your your intros, you you failed oh. Oh. to to <laughs> get those you're done in a timely order. Telling, so you now now me. Kevin, now you're opening whatever you're saying. It's cut in half. Whatever if if you don't finish in the time that that goes off on this phone, you're in trouble. Like fine, I'm, fine. I'm just gonna Here move go. on to the next person. Okay. Fine. Here we go. That's that's what Kevin. Hello, that's, everybody. Seriously, Kevin. Seriously, that's what's going right, to happen. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, Hello, ready? Hello, everyone in the 24 time zones. Welcome to Rumble Pop. Moving on. And Moving now, on. Uh, you're going to hear my co host and co conspirators. First, the crazy madman in that blue headset who's trying to play some bizarre uh, sound effect off his phone. He is Out of from time. Ohio. It's He's Donald. Hi, everybody. State. He's from a state. That Next. Chris Turner despises. Next. Chris. Despises Speaking of Chris. Cleveland let's go Indians, to Chris. The Cleveland Browns. Chris is next. All those teams. <laughs> Chris. Team that the New York Yankees had hey, such pleasure two years ago. We're done. With, we're done with Chris now. Playoffs. We're on to Bonnie. He is the original. Dog. We're on. We're, oh, we've, no. we've moved on to Bonnie. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Far be it from me to, to stop and applause. I'm sorry, everybody. Thank you. And. The man from Michigan, a man who's a professor of many various academic and copious arts. He is a man who's lovable. He is huggable. He is a man who the ladies love, who love him so much. He gives so much love. He is Professor Chris D. Turner. Jesus, that's pretty intense. I don't, I don't and, know about the giving so much. I don't know about that. That's a little love. You're giving, man, sir. And of course, last but not least, a lovely lady from that beautiful Grand Canyon state of Arizona. A lady who has the highest of moral character. A lady who lives the Cobra Kai lifestyle. She is a top 10 Polynesian dancer on the west coast of the United States. And she's one of the best cat mothers in America today. Give it up for the brilliant, the bewitching. She is Miss Bonnie! Thank you. Thank you. Congrats, 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 Bonnie. And uh, then we move on to Kevin. Yes, you know, I'm your humble <laughs> podcaster. You're a humble servant, the Grand Master of the Jedi and Vulcan Arts. You're a Supreme Chancellor, Brother Kevin. And I see Brother Big Sean is in the uh, chats. We want to give him credit and give him respect because he chose this interesting mm -hmm. and very delicious topic tonight. Yes, we're going to be discussing bad films from good directors. Insufferable cinematic duds that mm. came from excellent filmmakers. And I know that Mr. Turner and Miss Tuttle are going to go at it tonight over one particular film that they disagree upon. Oh, there's going to be a fight. Uh, Frank, by the way, uh, I've seen the first episode of season one of Yellow Jackets. It was very good, but uh, I forgot about it. So I need to go back. So I'm also excited to finish that now that I remembered. So thank you for reminding me. And yes, uh, definitely hats off to Big Sean for the idea. Appreciate you. And to Sammy, see, and I'm trying to Bust everybody's eardrums? What is that? What are you talking about? Probably the drum set thing. That's probably Wait, why. Wait, what'd you say, Kevin? <laughs> oh, jeez. Did you say drum why set? Why'd you gotta say something? I know, I know. I set it up. I set it up. Right. You know what? Since you did that, Donald, <laughs> that's a good segue for you to pull out something from your box. <laughs> that's what she what said. Now? That's what she said. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, man. That was epic. Uh, it's always fun to pull out. Always fun. <laughs> so this segment, I pull out books and talk about them. Books that I've read over the course of the week. Books that have just came out and maybe some books that have been out for a few weeks or even a few months. And I just recently found or went, oh, shit. Uh, so we're going to start with, uh, I thought this was a vampire's tale. It's called Night People. But uh, so far, the first issue, there are no vampires. So uh, if I was to do a review on Yelp, I would say two out of five stars could have used more vampires. Because there weren't any. You call them night people and there's no vampires? I mean, come on. So basically, uh, these two created a religion that they heard in their head and they're going cross country to kill people. Uh, meanwhile, there's another lady that has a lawyer that gets caught by them. And then there's another guy... Um, that is looking for these two murderers and uh, something happens to him on the first issue. And I still don't know quite what's going on. <laughs> so for it to be jam packed with so much story and me not quite getting the whole thing, I'm a little confused, but uh, I am willing to check in to the next issue. So they, they've at least got my attention, but they don't have me hooked. So we'll go from there. I'm going to give this a uh, 5.5 out of 10 for now. Um, if you have the extra money, sure. If you don't, let it go. Moving on to one of my favorites in the last year, and I've preached it over and over. If there has ever been a bigger fan, point them out, and I'll kill them. So then I can be the, the biggest fan. Uh, I'm talking about Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. Yes, those lovable, Kevin, help me out, anthropomorphic. Anthropomorphic. Damn it. Anthrop I thought I had it this time. There's lovable anthropomorphic. Sons of bitches. Who thought of that word? What kind of an asshole was like, yeah, let me call him anthropomorphic. <laughs> no one's ever going to get this. What a cocksucker. Anyway, Beneath well, the Trees Where Nobody <laughs> Sees. Issue 4 has finally landed, guys, and it's a big one. We finally learn Who's been murdering all these people around town? And it's a doozy. Let me tell you, it is great. The story is getting better and better. At the end, everything is falling apart and coming together. And I'm loving every second of it. Best story of last year. Best story of this year. Best story probably in the last five years. We're talking beneath the trees where nobody sees. Grab it. It's from IDW. Uh, you're not going to get a first print of number one for cheap. Get the fourth print when it comes out because we're already on the third. So get the fourth printing of the first issue, the third printing of the second, and the second printing of the third, and then the second printing of the fourth because this is probably already gone too, to be honest. Uh, 9.5 out of 10. It just keeps getting better and better. Highly recommend. Another banger, another one I thought was a lot of fun, Man's Best. Now, I think I talked about briefly the Ashkin that came out a couple weeks ago. This is the full story. So basically what happens is, is these pets, uh, they're basically, uh, what do they call them uh, when they're pets that are used to calm people down and uh, you can emotional take them on planes. Support. Yes, emotional support, support, support pets. Support. Thank you. Emotional support pets. So they're emotional support pets in space and they crash land on this planet and these pets have to try to save their humans. So it's actually a really cool story. I'm really digging it. Uh, right now, I give it a 7.5 just based on That's, the first story. It was kind of like that last season of Doctor Who. That the animal dogs who come to. Save oh, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it had uh, that dude that looked like Roger Daltrey for some reason in it. Like, that guy freaked me out. I was like, is that Roger Daltrey? But, like, younger? Did Roger Daltrey get younger? For those that don't know, he's a uh, lead singer there. Um, then we had Dawn Runner, number one Dark Horse Comics. Pretty popular. A lot of people were asking about it. Um, it's kaiju. It's robots. It's your basic robots versus kaiju. Uh, kaiju have started coming into Earth. Uh, all the Earth uh, basically started to fall apart, and then they decided to uh, create these giant robots, and now there's a new one. But what's going on with this new robot when this girl sinks up to it? She somehow turns into a man. I'm not kidding. Um, it's weird. I don't get it. Right now where it sits, it's at a four for me. Uh, will I give it another shot? If I'm bored. 
But otherwise, I, I don't know that I care enough to continue. So Dawn Runner, I don't recommend it. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but the other three, um, I would say, are okay. Like, at least, what, Night People was okay. And the other two are great. Man's Best and Beneath the Trees. Highly recommend. Uh, so that's it. I've, I've fully pulled out on all of you. Yay! What a great pull-out session, now. right? Ugh. I did I that faster. Afterwards. I did that faster than Kevin did the intros. Just pointing that you out. You did. I'm impressed. That out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know about Thank that. I, think I deserve true. a drum but roll. At the same time, at the same time, I'm, I'm, Kevin gave me a good nap, so I'm well energized for the show now. You see? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Did anybody hear anything that Chris was saying? I'm sorry. I love my I drums. I said that <laughs> Kevin gave me a good nap. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, well, yeah, energized. he does do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. see. we got some comments here. Uh, let's see. Big Sean says, Neil Parrott's very first drum lesson ever sounded better than Dawn tonight. Ouch. Wow. Wow, Big Sean. <laughs> I thought that maybe you were going to be uh, like trying to be nurturing and helpful. Yeah, but no. No, I should have. I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> Uh, Hector Hernandez is here. Hector says, Donald, what's your weekly reading schedule? Like 30 minutes a day. I need some motivation to read more. Uh, no, actually, it's not 30 minutes a day. I read a book probably in like 10 to 15 minutes, and I'll read one usually or two on like a Friday. And then when I'm on the weekend, if uh, because I'm off from, from both my uh, jobs on the weekend then, uh, I will sit down and then I'll block out like an hour and sometimes if I have time and if not, it's a half hour. It's just whenever I can make time and I do it like to be able to do this. That's I wasn't reading enough. I thought of the books that I was getting and I was like, how can I kind of motivate myself? So that's how this, you know, little segment came to be it was basically just to motivate myself, but also to share some of my opinions because, uh, you know, when I work at the shop, uh, I work at We Can Be Heroes in Chatsworth. And when I work there, uh, a lot of times people will be like, oh, well, you know, what book do you recommend? Or what do you, what do you like right now? What are you reading right now? And I was like, uh, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> like, I'm not, I read the, I read this, uh, you know, the back of a Bazooka Joe rapper a couple weeks ago. So I was like, okay, I need to, I need to get better at this. I need to, I need to move along. So that's, that's how I did it. Uh, Sammy says, better luck next time, Donald. Jeez, thanks. Uh, Frank wants an emotional support Gila monster. I don't think you do. Enrique's here, everybody. He says, hey, all sorry, Miss Donald pulling out. Well, it's all right, Enrique. I'll pull out on you some other time, buddy. Don't worry. You didn't really miss much. I mean. Nope, you didn't miss nothing at all. I mean, I I pulled out quite a bit, actually. That's That's a fair amount of pulling out in most of it pretty high quality. I'm just saying. But he finished really quickly. I did. Yeah, fa- faster than Kevin. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> but Not Kevin true. wasn't pulling out. Kevin never no, pulls out. If anything, I'm pouring in to the crowd. <laughs> Knowledge and good intros. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, er- don't understand what's so funny about that. I'm pouring onto the crowd. Good intros. <laughs> pouring into them. You know, knowledge. Just pumping them full, pump, right? Pump, pumping them full of <laughs> intros, given exquisite introductions of the three of you. Mm-hmm. I think they enjoy that. They enjoy being pumped, being yes. Pumped, pump, pumped up with, you know, excitement. You know, Great job. Introductions. Uh, uh, speaking, you know? speaking of pumping them with knowledge, uh, let's pump them full of hot sauce, uh, specifically half hot sauce. Yes, I just finished absolutely. this bottle today. It is empty. It was the trippy pickle hot sauce. Nice, thick dill pickle hot sauce with a really spectacular flavor. Love this one. One of my favorites, and it's out. So thankfully, I have another jar already in the fridge ready to go, another bottle. So round two, here we come, baby. Um, You can go to halfshotsauce.com, type in a coupon code Donald Hiccups to get 10% off your order. Order some hot sauce now, guys. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. You won't regret it. Uh, I also want to bring up really quickly uh, that uh, I did something over the weekend that I'm pretty proud of myself. Uh, You know how if you ever go out in public or something and you're like, gee, I just want a drink. 
You know, I want to have a, an open container and I'm tired of getting arrested or getting in trouble. Well, I looked up on uh, online and I found these can covers, right? So I have a Coca-Cola, right? And uh, it's actually not a Coca-Cola. It's a Mai Tai. <laughs> huh? And that is brilliant. <laughs> For those of you that are like, I don't drink Coke. Well, how about a Sprite? Lemon lime goodness for you. <laughs> and and they have a Diet Coke too. For those of you that are like, oh, I can't because of the sugar. <laughs> so you can get a Diet Coke can cover also. <laughs> so <laughs> I was pretty proud of myself on these. So uh, yeah, you know, when you're just walking around town and you want a Coke, <laughs> a Coke, crack open a can and enjoy. And speaking of which, throughout this podcast, I'll be having a little bit, just a tiny bit, to see where my tolerance level is. I got some new uh, edibles, and I'm just trying them out. And I thought I would try Uncle Arnie's uh, Smack and Apple Cannabis-Infused Beverage. It's 100 milligrams of THC. Uh, and I thought, let's try it out and see uh, see what happens. So uh, this is what we're going to do. So I've, uh, I've already had a little bit, and uh, now I'm going to have a little bit more. And... Uh, oh. Could you mix that with Splatter Brews Company beer? Is that possible with that beautiful Texas brew? Could you mix that together, or would that be a dangerous I think combination? Sp splattered Brews Company? What? Splatter. what? Splattered, splattered Frogs Brewing Company. Could you mix that with Splattered Frogs Brewing Waste Company? Not one, not... Delicious Texas beer. Done it. Works pretty good, in my opinion. Really? Oh, that's good to know. Okay, so I, what I want to say immediately about Uncle Arnie's is, there's a bit of an aftertaste, but the initial flavor is rather delightful. I do prefer, uh, there was a mango one, I think, over the apple. Uh, but uh, smack and apple just uh, just sounded good, so I was like, yeah, I'll try. Yeah, it's overwhelmingly sweet, so it smacks you right in the face with that sweetness. Uh, but then it does mellow, and then about... Yeah, there it is. There's that aftertaste, that uh, that weedy kind of pot cannabis flavory, you know, that you would get. Not my favorite aftertaste, which is why I have this drink. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, and yes, mom and dad, this is the stuff that uh, dad used that was very helpful. And they have it in bigger bottles now, which is great because it wasn't little shots. Uh, little shot bottles, which was how I was able to get it uh, over there. But uh, the larger bottles are nice. Very convenient. Uh, but anyway, JR is here. Um, JR, that is Jason. Jason, good to see you. All right. Big Sean says, Don, enough with your turgid and engorged comments. Oh, that's... I agree. Uh, that's sexual. <clears throat> That's of a sexual nature, sir. I I am feeling uh, uh, uncomfortable right now because I think he's hitting on me. Is it? Isn't he? No. You sure? He's not hitting on you. I think he's he is. not hitting on you. He doesn't need you, Donald. He, has he said my comments lady. are engorging to him. It means different things. Does it though? Yes. Does it? Yes. Okay. All right. Evan Aldrich is here. Hey, Evan. Uh, we used to cut the aluminum in cans. Ah, well, there you go. And Enrique says no crossfading. And he says alcohol and edibles, uh, tyranny, don't agree with me. Oh, well, you just take a little bit and then you can have you, – you got you to gotta work it out. There's a system. You just have to have uh, the ability for self-control I think is, is primarily the best uh, solution there. It's the, uh, the self-control. But I digress. Uh, Kevin, are you excited about the show? Of course we are, and we're doing this on behalf of our good friend of the show, Mr. Sean. Yes, Big Sean. He didn't. He, oh, didn't, I... he didn't go to uh, clown college to be called uh, Mister. He's Big Sean. But it says there he's listed as Mister Sean, so I'm going by his no. proper name in the comments, like Mister no, Sean. He doesn't like that. That's his professional yes. name that he uses for Skype conferencing when he's having meetings or he's applying for a job. But we, when he's out in the world, he's Big Sean. Okay, whatever you say. Big Sean. 
Miss Bonnie, <laughs> yes. would you like to go first with your first film that you like to trash from a, an esteemed <laughs> filmmaker? I the Steam director. Sure. Let, let's get this one out of the way. <laughs> oh, boy. I know what's coming. Matt, you know what's coming. First one that we're going to be talking about is Solo, a Star Wars story. Oh, I call Directed Foul. Directed by Mr. Ron <sighs> Wow. If ever there was something so wrong in the world, I'm it's, sorry, you guys. it's your I'm opinion. sorry. You can't argue that it was the best thing that Ron Howard has ever directed. No, it's not. Like he directed the paper. The paper was brilliant. Um, it's just it's not it's not really on par with his best stuff, in my opinion. I just I didn't. Yeah, wasn't what it wasn't one of my favorites. And I'm a big Star Wars fan. I have a high tolerance when it comes to Star Wars. I actually like you know all of the new movies. I really didn't care for Solo though. Solo just wow. did not do it for me on on several levels. It has Please explain moments, because there were a couple of things that I did enjoy about it. Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian was one of the greatest you know casting choices ever. He Very did a great inspired. performance there. I would have much preferred a Lando movie than a Solo movie. Wow. Well, we're getting that because of this movie. Yeah, but it's supposed to be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about Woody Harrelson? Eh, he's done better. <laughs> he was okay. He was in this. <laughs> he was. He was in it. He was there. <laughs> I don't remember. What? What about? What? What about Daenerys Tar Targaryen? On it, yeah, she's done better as well. Yeah, I feel I feel like yeah, she know, has. so much of it was <laughs> you sicko. I feel like so much of it was was forgettable, honestly. And then just yeah, I it okay. could have it could have been Bonnie, so much but... better. Although I, I I said this before, I'll say it again. I don't necessarily think that it's one hundred percent on Ron Howard because he did come into the project late. He did have to reshoot like eighty percent of the movie. So it's not like entirely his fault. But He's still got to take the brunt of it. I disagree. I, I don't think he has to take the brunt of it. I think he saved the project. This would not have been made if, if Ron hadn't stepped in, if a competent director hadn't stepped in. I can guarantee you this film would have been 10 times worse uh, than than what you think it is. Uh, sure. I think the weakness in this film it lies in, the, worse, in yes. the lead. The weakness in the film lies in the lead. Yeah. Harrison Ford is very, very unique. He is an incredibly hard actor to emulate. And to have that ability to pour yourself into the role like he did and make it your own so in, in such a unique manner that no one else can replicate that properly is a, a tip of the hat to his abilities for sure. But it also did handicap this film from the very beginning. Um, could they have used uh, a number of people instead of the actor that we got? Yes. I can't even remember his name. I'm so sorry. Um, it, yeah, forgettable. Like we haven't seen him in anything else. Oh, we, we actually have. He was very have good in it. It was Cocaine Bear. Um, oh. He was also in the TV show uh, Brave New World. That's right. He was also in Brave New World. Uh, so he's been in uh, a few things. I think the Brave New World was Alden Peacock. Alden Ehrenreich? You can't Peacock. remember his name? Yeah. What? It's Alden Ehrenreich. You can't remember that name? Evan yeah, Aldrich? Been... No, oh, Evan no. Evan does the floors. Alden, Alden Ehrenreich. I feel like we're saying the same name. Evan Aldrich. No. He does he does he's <laughs> not in movies, Kevin. Actually, he is. Anyway, so we get the origin of like the the meeting of of Chewbacca with Han. Uh, we get uh, we get an amazing <laughs> Donald Glover um, Landau to which I say they should definitely, the first Landau Marvel uh, miniseries that they did with him, they should turn that into a film. Wait, 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 Spectacular. Are you calling him Landau? That's what I said, Landau. It's Lando. It's Lando. I, I, I said Lando. <laughs> you did? No, he did. <laughs> that drink is kicking in, isn't it? <laughs> so you can't say anthropomorphic. <laughs> Shut up. I have growths under my tongue, damn it. I have tumors in my mouth. I can't help it. 
Sometimes I say the wrong words. Uh, okay. So we've got Lando. We got Lando. 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 Wow. Lando. Landoa. We have Landoa. And uh, then we get the amazing Darth Maul like teaser at the end. Cameo. Cameo. Which they haven't done anything with since. And it's. I, I think they are so actually. disappointing. Well, he was in Rebels. It, it, no, it means live action, though. Yeah. Yeah, one would hope that that, that something would happen after that because he had the, I, the spider I legs. Th- there's a spot for this, actually. If they do a season two of Obi Wan, Kenobi show. They already that's said they're the not doing go. a season two. Oh, because that would make sense if you wanted it to should have not, them. It be- shouldn't have been Vader to begin with. It was supposed to be Darth Maul. And then they got scared and they pivoted and they went with Vader instead. Cowards. Cowards. Very cowardly. Very cowardly. Uh, we got some more comments here. Uh, Chris Duquesne is here. Th- thanks, Chris. Thanks for joining. Uh, Sammy's telling me to shush. Uh, Big Sean says, Mr. Sean is preferred. Not too much a fan of Big Sean. Oh, come on. We've only been using it for 10 <laughs> straight years, and now it's like... 10 straight it's years? It's like, have you not known him for 10 years? But I never said, hey, Big Sean, back in 2014. Uh, that's That's... Probably because back then you were uh, pretending to be a mime and you weren't talking to anybody. I see. You would. How many times did you get stuck in a box at the shop, Kevin? Like it got old really fast. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Mr. Sean. Oh, so annoying. Mr. Sean. I think far and away from Ron Howard was pretty tepid. Did anybody say for is that the one? Is, it, is that the yeah, one with Nicole yeah. Kidman yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and Tommy Cruise? Yes. Yeah, I, I can agree. I can agree there, Mr. Sean. Uh, we got to come up with a different name, dude. If you don't like Big Sean, it's going to be, be something else. Like Rumpelstiltskron or something. I don't know. We got to come up with something. Okay, through the whole show, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pepper in nickname ideas. And if you think they're they're great, uh, we'll go with that. No, Don. Kevin has always called me friend. I, that's a line from a movie. That's a total line from a movie. We all know it. We all know that. I uh, no, I call him friend. <laughs> I'm me, me Smeagol, me friend. It was Kevin's hair falling out and he only had a few strands left my, at the time. So 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 what's my precious then? What's what's, what's supposed to be my precious? Oh, precious? I think we all know what that is. And we all know what your precious is, Kevin, yes. Yeah. Great pray tell, pray tell. Wait, we'll, get, we'll get canceled by saying that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Whatever you that was say. an easy one. That was an easy one. Okay, so overall, solo, not not your jam. Not my jam. No. Okay. You want to hear a solo, by the way? With a different. Oh no! No! no absolutely no. not. No. <laughs> no. I. I will. Let me. Let me get this in really quick. Who I think would have made a much better Han Solo mm-hmm. is the guy that played young Harrison Ford in the Age of Adeline. That guy. He had the right look. He had the right kind of swagger. He had the voice down. Even like he would have made a much more believable Han Solo than Alden What's-His-Face. And that guy's name is Anthony and Gruber. Oh, I've never seen that. Age of Adeline? No, never seen it. It's a chick flick, so uh, that would have been... Is that a time travel, time travel movie? Is it? It's not time travel. It's um, So Blake Lively plays Adeline. Um she has something happen to her when she's about 26 years old where she just stops aging. Oh, okay. And, and so she has to live life, not aging and young, the young Harrison Ford character is somebody that she fell in love with, um, in the sixties. And, um, she had to, to leave him behind and then cut to several decades later she meets somebody in another city elsewhere. That person turns out to be his son, <laughs> but she fell in love with him. And it, it's a it's an interesting story. It's it's very sweet, actually. I just want to yeah, total sick, like really quickly. Uh, I messed up. So 
the other when I was saying that I've 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 had uh, a cap full, maybe I didn't say that of the other. I forgot that it was the smaller bottle, so the cap size is different, right? So I've probably had four times the normal amount that what I've usually <laughs> had. So can I go next? <laughs> yeah. What? What? While I'm still here. <laughs> go ahead. I'm so sorry. It is with your choice. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh, yeah. There's a movie coming. Hang on. <laughs> I got this figured out. Here we go. Oh, this is the best show ever. <laughs> hey, Big Sal. Uh, Sean McGean is here. In bon- he says, Bonnie, that's like Steve Rogers with Peggy Carter and Sharon Carter. Hmm. Sean the Bean. <laughs> Sean, Sean Bean. Well, Sean Bean is a great actor. Yeah, but what? that's, that's Big Sean's actor. new nickname, maybe? Sean Bean? What do you think? Oh, no. 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 How about we just call him Bean? The Bean. Let's call him Mr. Sean. No, I don't call like that. Mr. Sean. I don't like that. No. I, I do. No, well, you call him does. friend. <laughs> All right. So, okay. <clears throat> so, here we go. Uh, Peter Jackson, we all know and love him, right? Or we should. He's done some spectacular work. Uh, he made New Zealand. he made an overbloated King Kong, and yet it still was fun. Uh, he made uh, a fantastical uh, uh, Tintin uh, with uh, Steven Spielberg. Uh, he did the Lovely Bones, which is a lot of a lot of enjoyable fun. I guess as fun as it could be for the type of topic it's it was. Fun, really? I know, I know. Uh, he not the word I would choose to describe. It. Made the Hobbit. He made the the Lord of the Rings, and uh, has done so much. Uh, Heavenly in, creatures. In his time. Yeah, I was about to say Heavenly creatures. But then he made one a film. Favorites. I think this came out in ninety or ninety two, and it 92. is one 92. of my least favorites of his because it is so off the wall gory to me, and it makes me sick every time I I get physically ill when I watch this film. And it is dead alive. So it's so funny. I love this movie so much. Zombie sex. And and norm and normally the gore and stuff is not something I'm into. But the way it's done in this is just I can't help but laugh at it. It's so great. Was it his grandma or his mom where like her, she kept snotting into the soup and shit falling from her nose and her mouth, and she kept eating it. And oh god, it's been a while look, since I've seen it. Like I can but... guarantee you right now. By the way, my mom and dad are on. Everybody say hi to my mom and dad. Hi, my mom and dad. Hello. Uh, I can guarantee you, my dad is right now going. This is disgusting. I hope they don't talk about this anymore. Um, <laughs> and I think I inherited a little bit of that from him because that grosses me out man that grosses me out it's disgusting and then he, you know what i do i look away yeah but and then i wait for that but it's to, to close my eyes bonnie and it's in. stuck in my head but what about evil dead movies which he may have been slightly influenced by i did course, not like the first boring. evil dead film i can i can promise yeah. you i'm not a fan uh do That's i enjoy evil film. dead too yes very much so uh do i enjoy army of darkness hell yeah even better oh yeah um, but Evil Dead One is superior. Not my jam. No, it's not actually. You ask any no, horror I don't, fan. I don't, think, I don't think it is. No one will say it's Evil Dead. Everybody will say Evil Dead Two. I think. And that's literally why Sam Raimi remade it. Yeah. I mean, there was a rights issue also, but you know, there was all kinds of stuff. I think yeah. they're both fun in their own way, and that's coming from somebody who does not really like horror. Ah, Big Sean says, "Let's just move on." Though. <laughs> from the nickname thing, use Big Sean if you must. Well, I mean, I we've got two Sean's in here. What am I supposed to do? There's two well, Sean. You could say we say it's Mr. Sean and Mr. McGeehan. That's it. Yeah, but hey, but, never, but you, Sean's that's his first name. You never change the name when it's me and and, and Krista K together in the chat. That's true. That's true. Yeah, but you always confuse everybody. Yeah. You're on the show. And when no, I say all the time. and when I say Chris, I go Chris Duque is here, everybody, and I know I say that for a fact. And anybody in yeah, the chat will back true. me up on that. 
that's so, true. You do say that. Um, anyway, Dead Alive, uh, a.k.a. Brain Dead, uh, a.k.a. Peter Jackson's film, a.k.a. a lot of people's favorite film of his that loves horror uh, and loves this kind of gross – gross horror now there, like i kick ass for the lord love that part like loved it mm-hmm. that was at the beginning you know in the cemetery and shit awesome love it if we got if we had <laughs> more of that i would be all in but it was just so much zombie baby my little my little heart couldn't take it and uh my stomach definitely couldn't so uh i got through it but never wanted to see it again and it actually almost ended a relationship that was just starting Almost did, because the person that introduced me to this was, uh, I should have known from the start, like something was wrong. Something was off. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, my friends introduced it to me in high school. Yeah. Yeah. I was was in the geek crowd, so our parties consisted of movie night at somebody's house while like one group played magic, (laughs) the gathering and in. You know, in the kitchen, and then the rest of us were watching anime and random movies. <laughs> An alert! And... <laughs> uh, yeah. Janet says, "Bonnie." And did... this was one of the movies. Did you know that okay. Anthony Ingruber from Age of Adeline also voiced Johnny Quick in Lego DC supervillains, and John Joe Joker in Batman: The Telltale Telltale series in 2016? Did you yeah. know that, Bonnie? I did not know that. And then she's like, "If you didn't know that, shame on you." Huh. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Big Sal, who, by the way, doesn't have a problem with being called Big Sal. Uh, he says the original name for Dead Alive was called Brain Dead. Yes, I already said that. Brain Dead. And uh, yeah. But he goes by the name of Osiris Reed on here. Uh, and then Janet says, do you like Little Sean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't – there's certain parts of our body that we don't re- wish to discuss uh, live on the, on the air, uh, Janet. So, right. you know, so some people <laughs> – you know, big, little, you know, good size, whatever. Uh, Sammy says, after the cap full, I'm skeptical of things Donald says. I've always been that way. Uh, there's worse movies than Dead Alive. No, you're not wrong. There are, there are worse movies. Um, um, can I, by the way, uh, can I go first? Can I Can I do my movie? Yeah. You you, you just you really just went. Didn't you? What were we talking about? Just. Oh my god. Oh Dead my alive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Dead alive. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Wait, no, I mean, I don't like, like it, your, but it was like a good your one. Brain cells. Your, your brain cells are dead. <laughs> <alive>. Man. Now the monster just do all three of yours now and get yours out of the way. Right. Jeez. I think I'll do the next one. That's a great... Chris, that's a great idea. Um, What was my others? Donald, what's your number two? What did I have? Uh, I got it. I got it. I got this figured out. Um, Okay, so this is about a prescription drug. Uh, It's called Valerian uh, in the City of a Thousand... Planets. Or sounds something. like sounds like a drug. <laughs> it like does. Drug. <laughs> <laughs> Have you taken Valerian lately? Can, in some cases, can cause anal bleeding. What? Oh. God damn! Like, like I oh, love the yeah, ones I where they go. In some cases, death. And I'm like, they, they, they say that on the air, and I was like, oh my god! They're literally <laughs> coming out and just telling you that their drug could murder you, and people are still going, yeah, I'm gonna try that. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm never. If one of the side effects says death, I'm not trying it. I'm not going to do it. Why would you? Just... That's so stupid. Ah. Uh, anyway, this movie was trash. Um, I thought it was going to be great. It had the kid that was in uh, Chronicle, and he was fantastic in that. And uh, then he was in the Peter, uh, no, the uh, Andrew Garfield um uh, not the uh, Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man. And he played uh, Green Goblin uh, in it. He turned into Green Goblin. It was awful. He was terrible in it. It was awful. And then I was like, yeah, maybe he's not going to be somebody that I want to follow. Because I, I did originally. Like uh, Ben Foster. I love Ben Foster's work. I think he's like one of the best actors of our time. 
and yet nobody's talking about how great Ben Foster is. And I thought Rucker, I love it. Ben Foster. Yeah, yeah. and he's I thought it was so going to be good. yeah, totally. And I thought it was going to be this kid too. And then he's done a bunch of crap, and I'm just like, eh, I don't know. So Valerian wasn't great. Uh, it, and this is directed by Luke Besson, who gave us the Fifth Element, like that one one of our contests on our live pod here. And the uh, professional for best yeah, sci-fi. He has done uh, the professional. He has done uh, Wasabi. Uh, he has done a ton of films of Jean Reno, and uh, all of them fantastic. He's done such a he's such a great action uh, thriller uh, writer slash director. Uh, he's just fantastic. And then he did this, and I think that everybody thought that this was going to be the next Fifth Element, and it was just a giant turd. It was confusing. The plot. Uh, I couldn't even tell you what the plot was. Like, there's a, a thousand planets. Like, it's Valerian. It's uh, like uh, they were on the run, and it's just – it's terrible. It is a terrible film, and I don't recommend it. Um, if you would like for me to tell you what the actual plot of it is, I will. But uh, I don't think it's necessary because I don't think you should watch it. Um, that's how bad it is. <laughs> uh, and let's see. We got – uh, I'm so confused with the Sean thing now. We've got little little Big Sean, Mister Little Big Sean says, uh, "Not Donald Blake, but Donald Baked." <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, uh, and then uh, Cannibal Holocaust was crazy good. Says Osiris. Uh, Sean McGean says Valerian was pretty decent except for the whole Rihanna tangent. Yeah, that was terrible. And Janice says Valerian is an herbal medicine used for sleep. Valerian root, yeah. That I do know. As a vitamin sales associate, it actually the plant we get Valerian from. Cyrus says taken. And Sean McGean says what was fairly cool was the French idea of the future as optimistic instead of being dystopian. Well, I, I felt like the fifth element was pretty uh, optimistic in a way, too. I mean, yeah, there was like smog and pollution and stuff, but that was that was more realistic, you know? Like, it's only going to get worse. So they, they've built up, you know? So the pollution stays down, and they've built up above it. So that's, there, there's optimism there, and there's hope, I think. Uh, a lot of Luke's uh, films are about hope and optimism and, and uh, redemption. Um, even the professional, um, there's there's a redemption uh, to Jean Reno's character in there as well, uh, and that's it. That's that's uh, that's that one. And uh, um, I'm going to talk about my next one is um, Oz, the Great and Powerful, my brother Sam Raimi. Okay. That's that's not it. That's <clears throat> dead alive. Okay. Oz, yeah, Sam Raimi, uh, who has done, as we just discussed, uh, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness, you know, all this spectacular. Dark man. Dark man. All these spectacular things. Uh, wanted to give you the origin of the wizard of Oz, Oz himself. And then uh, thought that uh, this, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, James Franco. Thank you. Seth Rogen's best friend. Uh, James Franco would be an excellent choice as the lead in this. And talk about miscasting a lead in a film. You could not have been more far off casting. Like, I would have rather have seen... I think we would have had a better shot as at Charlie and the Chocolate Factory if Johnny Depp didn't do that. And we had James Franco do that. And then we put... Johnny Depp over as the Wizard of Oz in in Oz. I think we would have had uh, a better film. Not that you know, I would have chosen him either, but I'm just saying. You know what wizard I'm looking forward to is I'm looking forward to Jeff Goldblum playing the Wizard in Wicked. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Oh. Huh. It's going to be pretty awesome. And that's coming to film, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. 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 Thanksgiving, I believe. Sean says also the Star Wars franchise ripped off a bunch of tropes from the Valerian graphic novels from the early 70s. At what point, Sean, are you not ripping off? You're just all coming up with very similar ideas because you shared 
uh, psychotropics and you tripped balls and you all saw the same thing in space and time. At what point does does that get recognized? Because I can guarantee you, uh, a, like it's like trying to say that Martin Scorsese didn't do coke when when he was making films like The Taxi Driver. Holy, I uh, I mean, come Rage on, you, you think that bull. you think that you think that Oz is worse than Spider Man Three? I do, and here's why. Let let me explain it, because this isn't a trilogy. This is uh, this is like the first one, right? So if you look at the first one of Raimi's Spider-Man films, it's excellent. If you look at the second one, it is exceptional. And then, at this point, Sony says, Ah, uh, you know, I think we want Venom. And he's like, no, I, do, I don't want to do Venom. I want it. No, you no, you don't want Venom? Well, what if we did Venom? No, no, <laughs> I want the Vulture and, uh, you know, maybe another character. How about uh, Venom? Um, do, do I have to? Well, you're, uh, you're obligated, you're obligated to, to go with, with Venom. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we want you to do Venom. And he's like, fuck. All right. Well, I already wrote, you know, had the script written and, and everything. Yeah, you can redo that. Okay. All right. And then, Jesus, that was a flash right there, Bonnie. <laughs> That so, <laughs> so uh, while Spider-Man Three is not a great film, it's really bad. Actually, I'm gonna say due to studio interference and the fact Back that we control. already got two great films prior to that, uh, his worst work would be this Oz film. I I think it's it's terrible. And I did just last year watch The Quick and the Dead for the first time. In very much enjoyed it very much i did not expect to enjoy it as much as i did it's a lot of fun it's quite a hoot quite a hoot um and dennis perez says i agree with donald hands down thank you dennis see there we go philippe says the marvel that's a bad movie the marvels <laughs> i kind of liked it uh, i don't know about that it's not that bad i i don't yeah. think it's bad at all <laughs> I it think it's has fun. Its, moments, you know? it's it's I mean, a the, fun the, 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 film. What about do, what about what about uh, three ladies interact very Doctor well together? Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. You know what's funny? I actually prefer the Marvels over that one. Well, honest. did you did you rewatch Doctor Strange? Have you seen it more than once? Yes, I saw yeah. it again. Recently. You saw it again. Still okay. Like it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. When you watch it the second time, did you enjoy it more or less? Less. Less. Really. Interesting. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. It's for just, me. I don't know. I just I was so underwhelmed by it and it didn't get any better the second time hmm. i guess it's because everything everywhere all at once just took the thunder of the multiverse stuff out of it maybe maybe if that movie hadn't existed maybe it'd be better but didn't dr strange come out first no you sure yep you sure about that yep i thought everything everywhere all at once came out in like november and Doctor Strange, Strange was like May before that. Yeah, no, Doctor Strange was the May after. Ah, okay, gotcha. You think when they watched it, they were like, "Fuck." Yes. <laughs> That's fair. I I very much enjoyed Doctor Strange too. Uh, I did not like it the first time I saw it, but the second time I very much enjoyed it. Uh, the only thing that I still could not like was the Scarlet Witch. Um, I felt like we should not have had WandaVision if we had nope. yeah. Doctor Strange 2. Or, why did she get her blow? Why did she get why did we get her like going crazy twice? Yeah. It just and they say, Oh, Wanda's the strongest character in the Marvel Universe. No, actually she's now, in my eyes, one of the weakest because she is not uh all there. Like there's a there's a switch in her that's been flipped and uh something's happened. You know, like like they say that that women are more likely to become uh, schizophrenic, I believe. And that starts at an early late age for women. And uh, it's it's much more prevalent in females than in, than in males. This doesn't help that case. You know what I mean? Like, it just seems like she's just lost it and she's lost her marbles. And, and I get, like, you know, losing your fake children, 
will do that to you. But also, you're supposed to be a superhero, you know? Like, and she already blew up a whole city and everything. And like, they just from the start they made her kind of a kind of a dunder, and I did not like that. Uh, and I don't think Marvel knows how to handle their female characters very well. Uh, I'm going to be honest. The only one that I felt that they could do a great job with was the Black Widow, and that's because the Black Widow, this is going to sound weird, hear me out, uh, felt more like a man. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, when you know, because she's like, I'll sleep with whoever, you know, just to get what I need. Uh, and I'll do, I'll do that. I'll punch you right in the face, you know. I'll, I'll do, I'll, I'll talk shit to you. You know, she just, like, there was this very uh, girl next door, bro, you know, type vibe with her that I felt and that I think Marvel recognized and was like, yeah, we can work with this. But then when they got to some truly female characters, they were like, fuck, what do we do? Oh, man, oh, shit. You know, and then they just kind of screwed the pooch. So not not the best uh, with with the females, Marvel. I mean, was. Echo wasn't bad. If you look at Marvel, Echo's a little different. Um, yeah, oh wait a minute! What about a uh, Hawk Hawkeye with um, oh Kate gosh, Brain Freeze? Yeah, Kate Bishop. I, I, I liked her. Yeah, it's an enjoyable series for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're talking about like the initial run and the characters and stuff that they were developing. That's later. Both those that you mentioned were television series characters too. So a little yeah, different. Good point. Also, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Um, they had more time to develop than they had to. They were forced to, technically, because they're six to ten episodes or what, what whatnot. Um, but uh, I, I digress. I'm rambling on. Uh, let's get to uh, whoever Professor. is next. I don't know who Professor that is. Professor Turner. Did Bonnie right, we'll go? About, yeah, she, she, she did one. Yes. Okay, cool. I was first. Uh, we're going to talk about a movie that isn't necessarily a bad movie. I just think it's the this director's worst movie. Um, and that would be my... Uh, my favorite director, who I think is a phenomenal writer and director, uh, Martin McDonough. Uh, and the movie would be Seven Psychopaths. Oh, um, I enjoyed that one. I, I, and so here's here's the thing. If you look at all of his bodies of work, it's just his least... In my opinion, I think it's his... His... his not his best. Uh, I think it's underwhelming with the cast that he had. Like The cast was freaking... Uh, Michael Pitt, my, uh, Sam Rockwell, Colin Farrell, Christopher Walken, um, Woody Harrelson, like great cast and an interesting storyline. And, you know, it's about a writer who was looking for a screenplay, but can't find anything. He has a catchy title, but doesn't go with it. So then he finds a couple of like, uh, guys who, uh, um, steals, a, they kidnap a dog of a gangster. And then he uses that, uh, you know, the events that happened because um, as fodder for a screenplay. Um, and it's an interesting premise and interesting cast. It just was very underwhelming. Yeah. But like I said, I'm not saying by any means this movie is a bad movie. It's just if you look at his body of work, it's his le- it's probably his uh, his worst film. Um, I, I really do in- enjoy the film, but not as much as all of the other ones because he's a phenomenal director. Um, and it's just I'm always in awe with everything he does. I, I, I 100% agree, Chris. This is a, this is a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> uh, and just think, think about the movie. It was only shot for $15 million. The movie, the movie, since it's a movie, yeah, it was shot in $15 million. <laughs> It's one of the few movies that he's actually shot that was shot in America, too. A lot of his movies are shot in Europe, so. You and were, it was mostly shot in L.A., right? Yeah, it was shot in L.A., yeah. Yeah, you, like 100% you, in L.A., I think. You were saying it wasn't, it was it was good, but not great, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, that, I yes. agree, I agree there. Um, I wanted more from this. Yeah, underwhelming, this right? Yeah, very underwhelming. Yeah, especially um, with the actors you had involved, uh, Wow, uh, what's his name? Yeah. The guy sitting in the Christopher middle. Christopher Walken, Sam Rockwell, Sam Rockwell, Tom Farrell, Sam Rockwell is one of my another one of my like underrated. Like he should be, he's he's got a decent you know name you know of course, but mm-hmm. like he should be a level. You know what I mean? Like the man is a chameleon. He can step yeah, into I mean, 
any role. Yeah, I think my, my favorite Sam Rockwell performance was in a Mark McDonough movie, and that was Billboards. Uh, he's phenomenal in that movie. Yeah. Uh, the three billboards of Macchiata Sestrata, right? Something yes, like that? Yes, sure, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I just called it three billboards, yeah. Yeah, something like that. It's a long, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. But he's phenomenal. I also really like him in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, too. Uh, what was the movie and director again? Uh, Seven Psychopaths, Martin McDonough. Thank you. Somebody else was asking, not me. It's not. I promise. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, it's worth a watch. Uh, like I said, it's not his best film, but it's it's fun. Like I said, great cast. Uh, Sean McGean says Michael Pitt is great in The Dreamers. And Sam Rockwell yes, is. If you is... have not seen The Dreamers, I need to do that. It's a good movie. Eva Green. I don't know anything Green, about. She's in it too. Isn't that the one with uh, Dennis Quaid? And the like, Dreamers. Yeah, they go into the dreams or no. something. No. 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 It was directed by Bernard Br- 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 Bertolucci. Sounds like a, an Italian restaurant. Well, good Italian director. <laughs> he is Italian, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. You had the pizza at Bertolini's. It's a good. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sean 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 McGean says he was great in the film where he played the Gong Show dude. Oh yeah, um, Sam Rockwell. Yeah. Um, what was that? I can't remember now. But you're right. <clears throat> he was really good. He, they they like he was a spy too or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was yeah. a really good movie. Yeah. yeah. He directed that. that was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Uh, Bonnie, have you gone yet? I, I did. Kevin hasn't gone. Kevin, okay. Kevin hasn't gone yet. All right, Kevin. I'm gonna go with Oliver Stone's disaster movie, Alexander. Ugh. The man who gave us Wall Street, Platoon, Born on the Fourth of July, Any Given Sunday, wrote Scarface, gave us a meandering piece of crap <laughs> biopic drama of Alexander the Great. And what's sad is speaking of Colin Farrell, wasn't he in that movie? Tom Farrell played Alexander. Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> Not and so the great. Thing is, I oh don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy Colin Farrell as Alexander. That, that, it, see, it starts right there, and that's where you have a problem. Where you're a lead actor as Alexander, and you just don't buy him. I'm sorry. I don't believe that you're Alexander the Great, buddy. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Angelina Jolie is his mother, Queen Olympias. Val Kilmer plays his father, King Philip II. Even he looks just weird as, as, as his father. Anthony Hopkins plays Ptolemy. <laughs> Jared Leto plays his best buddy, has, has, has Fasian. Rosario Dawson uh, as uh, one of his lovers, or well, a female lover in this case. Uh, and Chris... for some reason, she had like the worst, like, like her accent sounded Russian for yeah! some stupid reason. It didn't make any sense. Uh, C- C- Christopher Plummer yeah. as Aristotle. I mean, you have a great cast here. It this... all around. It's just it just sucked. And I remember one line in particular that made me laugh when um, I think it was Jared Lowe's character, Aspasia, was telling him, Alexander, be reasonable. I mean, it was just over the top acting. It was just terrible. Now the think, cinema, cinematography is great. It looks it looks good, but the acting is awful. I started hating Colin Farrell as an actor because of that movie. Really? Yeah. He's respect. I, he's earned my respect again. But yeah, that movie yeah. I hated him so much that I was like, I hate him as an actor. He's he's definitely um, acted before. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he's phenomenal yes. in yeah. Bruges. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. He's he's acted like like I mean like acted and like and acted. Inishman too. Uh, yeah. The, well, let's not let's not talk about that movie, shall we? Because, wow, I loved the performances. That movie made me so angry. <laughs> oh, but, the, but you got to admit, he was really good in it. He was phenomenal in it. Yeah. Phenomenal. Um, there's been so many times where I've sat through the Oscars, and I would go, well, they messed that up. Like, that went to the wrong person. That went to the wrong person, too. And this is that's one of those moments. I felt like Colin was fantastic. Like, really good, really good, really good. But that's kind of how you can tell a movie's bad because if if you have such a phenomenal actor being not good, 
it's just bad direction and it's, it's an all around bad movie because like well, well, I, he's there. I feel like somewhere when you have like as many A listers in this cast as there were and they're all terrible. Yeah, true. But I, like, what was that one film uh, with all the trees? The Happening or something? Yeah. 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 Where everybody. Mark Wahlberg yeah, movie? Everybody was awful. John Leguizamo was terrible. And that's weird to see a bad performance from John Leguizamo. And like, yeah, Wahlberg was terrible. Zoe Duchanel was awful. It was so bad on so many levels. Whereas, in, how much uh, of it was the script and how much of it was the direction? It could, yeah, it's true. I, I would say uh, both, since he writes and directs. Hated both, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you kind of. You can't blame too many things here, buddy. When when you do both, you kind of screwed the pooch. Uh, Nicole says, agree, Alexander was awful. Hi, Nicole. Good to see you. And uh, let's see. Sam Rockwell's real. Yeah, we got that. Okay. Uh, yeah, Kevin's right. It's a Berticelli. Ber- Berticelli. Berticelli? Bertolucci. Bertolucci. Oh, God. Bertolucci. All right. Fine. <laughs> Uh, and Sean says, from Alexander the Penguin, oh, how the mighty have fallen. I mean, I like his penguin, though. His penguin's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I think maybe what it's Sean's... Completely, like, unrecognizable as the penguin. Sean's being a little <laughs> cheeky, I think. He's talking about he was Alexander the Great, and now he's the penguin. And how, uh, maybe, Maybe, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that's what Sean's going with. And I'm, like, super stoked about the TV show. It's because I think that... Trailer. He is on a he's he's in the prime renaissance period. He's John Travolta uh, pulp fictioning it right now. Like he is staged for an epic comeback, I feel. Like we're gonna be hearing more from this guy. Yeah, because he I think his worst movie is probably uh Daredevil. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible as well. Well, well, I mean, yeah. But also, I don't think anybody gave him direction either. It didn't feel like, you know. Like, the only thing good about that movie was, well, okay, there was two things. It was Michael Clark Duncan as Kingpin. He was fantastic. Was he better than uh, than Vincent D'Onofrio? No. no. But no. he was the best we got for that time, and he was still really good. You know, he was. that's the one... Like yeah, one you of have the to few. compare it to John Travolta. I mean, yeah, Punisher. Oh yeah, John Travolta is the villain in the Punisher. That's true. He Something was. He saint. was. He was. No, I thought wasn't he? I thought he was a uh, the same character. No, Vincent Saint. I think is who he was in the Punisher. Oh, John Travolta. I thought he was. Uh, no, no, he wasn't the Kingpin. Kingpin. I mean, he might, he should have been technically, I guess, if, yeah. if you think about it. But Lionsgate owed the rights at the time, and I think they were just like, oh, whatever, we'll create a new. I think it was Kingpin, but they changed the name because they didn't have the rights to it. it Maybe seemed like Kingpin. It's possible. Dress yeah. like Kingpin, act like Kingpin. Okay, like Sean McGee says, "Yeah, I was being cheeky. He's good as the Penguin." Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Jason says, "Don, I think you hit the right dose." Thanks, buddy. I think I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. For those of you that don't know, uh, throughout the show, I was going to start <laughs> sipping a little bit of this Smack and Apple uh, edible, 100 milligrams, and I I thought I misdosed, but I think I'm okay. I like I feel like I'm leveling off. I got a little loopy, but I feel like I'm starting to level off a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> So, I will tell. <laughs> right. So we'll I see, stopped. We'll see, yeah. I stopped sipping um, to kind of, I don't know, to do something, to not be like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason says he's catching up. Oh, hey. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right, Bonnie, you haven't gone yet. So what's your choice? <laughs> she has gone, but. <laughs> Oh, come it's on. It's her second go around. It's her okay. second go around. This is, my, this is my second. We're we're going with my second movie. Okay. And uh we're gonna go with um Abduction, directed by John Singleton. Ooh. 
Oh, 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 Wait, this is so, the, that, this is so the, bad. The wolf, the wolf kid from uh, yes. Twilight, right? Didn't this ruin yes, his career? Taylor, Taylor Lautner? Oh my God, that, that, that movie destroyed his career. Yeah. It did, indeed. This is this was like <laughs> actually the, the last like, big movie that he directed. Good, good choice, Bonnie. That's a good choice. So yeah, it, it was a bit of a career killer for very good reason. I mean, it was the... the the script was just all over the place. The storyline was just completely wackadoodle, out out of like nowhere. None of this is even remotely believable. Not that action movies are typically in the realm of believable, anyways. But I mean, it's just, just it just didn't work on so many levels. And it was meant to be like a career booster for Taylor Lautner as well to kind of introduce him as a young action star. And that failed for him also because it just didn't work. And after this movie, he actually did have a string of, of more bad action movies. <laughs> Some of them even worse than this. I watched one on Tubi last year. It was god awful. Where he was like a bike messenger or something. It was, yeah. I remember what, like the, the first Captain America movie. I remember they, they showed the trailer to this movie on there. And I said, oh boy. I feel sorry for this kid. This is a, it's not going to work out too well. Yeah. That said, it is a very fun, bad movie. <laughs> I okay. own it. I love to throw it on and watch it every now and again because it is just kind of a fun, stupid little piece of fluff. One of my favorite, favorite lines in it because it's just so stupid and it's just out of nowhere. He meets up with the guy who's trying to murder him. This teenage boy, like 17 years old, and this like Russian mafia dude is trying to murder him. He meets up with him at a Pirates game, at a Pittsburgh Pirates game in the stadium. And the dude sits down, he's got his bag of popcorn, and he's like, I like popcorn. I don't understand baseball, but I like popcorn. Okay. That's a great line. That's a great line. It's it's sure. Okay, so you like, but but you want to murder me, and and we're sitting here in the middle of a baseball game, just shoot the shit. I like you're that. trying that's you're trying a, to murder me, bro. That's a really like, nice line. Uh, here's yeah, here's the best part: if you're gonna meet a Russian uh, somewhere, uh, don't eat any of the food, like, and don't let them touch you. You know what I mean? Like, aren't they like notorious for poison? Like, isn't that, like, their jam? Like, they're, like, masters of poison. Like, they'll find a way to poison you. Isn't that how, like, half the people that have stood up against Putin have, have died? It was, like, some form of toxic exposure or something? Mm-hmm. Could be. Yeah, there's, uh, that's the whole yeah. premise of the second season of the show, uh, Slow Horses, uh, with Gary Oldman, is about that. They're basically a Russian... Uh-huh, see? Poison. Yeah, so never trust a Russian with your popcorn. That's that's the moral of the story, I think. <laughs> yeah, so it was terrible. Yeah, yeah this was... Yeah, yeah not, it's not great. Not exactly the, the greatest performance by um, anybody. Like, there's some big-name people in here. Um, well, Lily Collins was still kind of up and coming at the time. Thankfully, she's had a, a better career since this movie. Um, oh, my God, what's his face? Uh um, Dermot Mul no wait no not Dermot Mulroney uh uh Dermot Dermot no 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 other one Dermot Mulroney Dermot Mulroney yeah. Dermot Mulroney. <laughs> Dermot Mulroney. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah he, yeah um he plays Taylor Lautner's father but you never actually see his face you only hear his voice on the phone throughout the whole movie oh um which is interesting um Alfred Molina's in it who plays an FBI cop who uh, uh May or may not be dirty. Mm. Spoiler alert, he is. <laughs> oh no, I was gonna but... watch this tonight, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's just a, it's so it's so off the wall. It does have some good fight sequences in it. I'll give him that because you can't have a Taylor Taylor Lautner action movie and not have him fight because he is a very skilled martial artist. I think he's like a double black belt. But yeah, it's just uh, the, the the movie's a little a little bonkers. Fun, 
but for you know all the wrong reasons. <laughs> That's so fun to be dead. All right, oh. all right. Let's let's uh, for the big yeah. reveal for the next one. Um, whoever's next is it, Chris? Yes. Ah, yes. uh, see, there we go. Drum roll while Chris gives the reveal. All right, this movie shot in Chicago, like many of this director's movies. However, unlike the other movies by this director, it's a freaking stinker. We got uh, Curly Sue by John Hughes. I mean, come on. Ooh, <laughs> it's not great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why he was. He he knew he was ready to retire for this movie. Like, well, I mean, he did do like seven it was Beethoven films. The last films. thing he ever wrote, right? Ah, uh, maybe was this before or after Home Alone? After. It's after. I, yeah, definitely yeah, after. And I think it might have been. Yeah. yeah. I think this was his. Yeah, his very last. Yeah. Feel like a year later. <laughs> Come on, Mister Little Big Sean. What a way to go out. Hey, Crimson Fox. But for those of you who don't know, uh, the movie is, like a lot of these movies I was picking today, I don't know why, uh, it, it's it's about, basically, it stars Jim Belushi and uh, uh, Allison Porter, um, who plays Curly Sue. And it's really about, like, a, a con man, or a homeless man, and, like, and he meets this girl, and the two of them start conning people. And then they meet this other woman who like changes their lives, and basically it's it's not a very good movie. It's it, it's a cute premise if you think about it, but it's just not it's not good. Uh, I don't I I do not enjoy watching this movie. I don't think John Hughes enjoyed writing it. I don't know if it, if he's like the studio was like you owe us another film, John, and so we went and made this or what? But probably, yeah. yeah. Honestly, I don't think I've seen it since it came out. So it's been like, what, almost 30 years? And I, it's not one that stuck with me. 33 years. Yeah. Yeah, it, it did not stick with me. And and John Hughes movies usually do leave some kind of lasting impression. But this one? Mm. We're feeling it. I feel yeah. it. You know, there is a young Steve Carell in this movie, though. Is it really? Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wait, was he Curly Sue? Yes. Yes, he was. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> you yeah, can see. Let me pull the picture up a little bit more, and you can see that that from the profile, that looks like Steve Carell right there. Look. <laughs> Let's get the nose. Look at the nose. It's just starting to develop. You see? And the cheekbones there and those eyes. On, on forgettable with the eyebrows. That is definitely Steve Carell. Now, Steve Carell um, plays a character named Tessio. Named what? Tessio. I'm sorry, what? Tessio. T-E-S-E-O or T-E-S-I-O. <laughs> why Why that name? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I, I don't remember, but he looks really young. I'm looking at a picture of him right now. Um, definitely young. I Interesting. Because, yeah, he looks so Tessio. <laughs> yeah. We're fine. Anyways, look him up on IMDb. You'll find the picture uh, right there. Um, yeah, not a good movie. Curly Sue. Uh, it's a shame because I really do like uh, I do like Jim Belushi, and it, this was just not a good movie for him. So. Yeah, this was uh, right after this. Jim Belushi uh, sat down and uh, gained a ton of weight because this was the last time I remember Jim Belushi as thin Jim Belushi. And I wasn't that thin in this movie. He was, I guess he was. He was. He was thin he was. enough. Yeah. Um, but then he went on. What was that? According to Jim, or something like that, for like ten seasons. Yeah. They said in a in a news article, they said it was the uncancelable uh, show. Like they they could never cancel it. They never. I think he retired from it before they were able to cancel it. He was like, I don't want to do this anymore. It was on for that long. And like they were like the ratings were never good, but they were just good enough that they always had like a project or something that didn't work out in the first couple weeks of of their new season of shows, and they would call up and be like, "Well, we're bringing it back." 
and then he would, hey, Jim would just be sitting there probably in his recliner and he'd get the call. And be like, yeah, all right, I'm there. I'll do it. You know, and then he, they'd start filming. But yeah, the uncancelable show. Kind of interesting. What show was this? I think it was called According to Jim. Yeah, According to Jim, yes. Yeah. It never ended. I The legend says that it's still it being filmed. It lasted eight seasons. Legend states that it's still being filmed to this day, Chris. So I, I, yeah, it lasts, it lasts 2000, October 3rd, 2001 to, to June 2nd, 2009. It's forever. Her first that show. That's a long time for us to come. Yeah. Yeah, long time. And they ran out of ideas almost as fast. As, well, actually, step by step, ran out of ideas fast. Day by day. Because I remember when they did the chocolate shake twice they did that twice and you look it up look it up they did it twice where the kid poured the chocolate syrup into his mouth and then he took a swig of the of the milk and they're like what are you doing and he's like i'm making chocolate milk and then he started doing this they did it twice no, that wasn't it he would just yeah. was it that okay it was the head shake yeah okay it wasn't it was they did they, they did it twice and i was i was like i caught him and i was like that's shameful I want to say they did it more than twice. Really? I'm be up. Yeah, it was a recurring thing. Damn. With, with a couple of characters. Why? This wasn't very funny the first time. Because they were all boys. That's because the That's show why. wasn't very funny. <laughs> hmm, true. Very true. I so I don't know how it lasted as long as it did. I don't know. Uh, Kevin, you got another one? Yes. The man who gave us Twin Peaks TV show, the Mulholland Drive, Inland Empire movies, Blue Velvet, and The Elephant Man, and Lost Highway, David Lynch's 1984's Dune. Hmm. My, my, my. Now, again, another movie with beautiful cinematography and has some interesting ideas, but I just don't feel, didn't feel it was well executed. It's great having Patrick Stewart as Gurney before he was Picard. You know, it's mm-hmm. great having Sting. As 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 a bad guy, you know, as part of the, the Harakonnens, uh, you know, younger nephew, you know, was a villain. Also, is good. Chucky's in the movie. You know, he plays one of the one of the Harkonnens, uh, uh bad guys as well. But it's just, it's I hate to say this, it's boring. It's just meanders mm-hmm. along. It's just not. I just just wasn't feeling it. Where Dennis Villeneuve's version of dune part one and two is much better and better executed and the story is more engaging but this original version from david lynch unfortunately i just just wasn't feeling it i call it done instead of (laughs) dune done Done, yeah oh that's fair that's fair no his movie didn't have like uh didn't have um what do you call those things that you masturbate with? Uh, <laughs> the <what>? popcorn buckets. <laughs> popcorn buckets, yes. Yep. <laughs> that was the dumbest marketing campaign I've ever seen. Let me let me pull it up so everybody can see. <laughs> it's like the first search. <laughs> oh, they, look, they look like flashlights. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Wait, what was look, that? A flashlight? Look, look, look. Somebody flashlight, on flashlight, yes. Somebody on there's eBay. Something, there's, something, there's something called a flashlight. I, thought, I know it's flashlights. There's one something you called don't a flashlight. Know what a flashlight is? Kevin, I'll tell you later no. what it is. This oh, is how God. somebody on eBay is trying to sell the popcorn yeah, bucket. You've seen Zach and Mary, right? Mm-mm. <laughs> oh my god, it kind of does. It does look like <laughs> <laughs> They're selling it with the lotion. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, Sean you know, McGeehan, you make a very good point. Have yes, we have never have saw Podorowski's version of Dune in the seventies because I heard it was a really would have been a really good movie. Yeah, it's sad we never got to see it. It's true. But there's a documentary you can watch. It actually discusses what, what's what's in there and the different concepts that would have that could have been or would have been. And he's still alive. He's like in his nineties. Janet says, yes, Kevin, that Dune was hard to watch. The newer ones are so good. Uh, Janet, or Sammy says, Jesus Christ, Chris. Uh, Jesus, Chris? What did Chris say? Probably flashlight. 
Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, okay. That, got it. Got it. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Little Big Sean hey, says. Hey, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Dune 84 wrong? is a misfire yeah. for Lynch, but it has some it, cool it, elements it and a look that would <laughs> now be called steampunk. And Sean McGean says, what's a tragedy is that. Oh, yeah. You already talked about that. And then. Yeah. What a risky. Mr. Little Big Sean says, Amen. I recently saw the documentary and was blown away by his ideas, which got spread out to other films. Yeah, it's true. I, yeah, different sci fi films definitely took Hodorowski's ideas mm -hmm. and used them in the future. Alien, the Alien movie the, the, from uh, Ridley Scott definitely borrowed certain elements. I think even Lucas may have borrowed some elements for Star Wars. Uh, they also stole his name for the title of a film, of a uh, Studio Ghibli film. Hodorowski? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's about the flying pig. Oh. Yeah, he stole that. So there's that too. It's disgusting what movie studios do nowadays. Uh, so Bonnie. Uh, you mean Porky's the next baconing? Is that what it was called? Yes. Bonnie hasn't <laughs> gone yet. So can Bonnie. Bonnie, can you do one now? Her last one. Her last yeah, one. My last one. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, we are going to be talking about uh, Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Oof, yeah. Yeah. All right, I had, just real quick, I have a brief, like, just a brief, like, sidebar here. I, this is how I feel about all of Christopher Nolan's movies, though. You what? Fair you enough. dislike all of them? Yes, I don't like him as a director at all. Yeah. I didn't. I know. You don't, you don't like the prestige? You don't like the prestige like of these? Uh -uh. Are you serious? What's wrong with you? The first Batman's not bad. Or, sorry, the second Batman's not bad. Dark Knight's not bad, but. No. So I guess you prefer The Illusionist or The Prestige, which is fine. I don't like either movies. of those movies. Wow, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Why? He's entitled to his opinion. Yeah, Kevin. Okay, fine. fine. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. But yeah, Christopher Nolan, I mean, yeah, he, he can be a little bit divisive, you know? Some people really like his stuff, some people not so much. And this is one of the ones that, I mean, I do appreciate his work, but not this one so much. I really wish I liked it. I went into it wanting to like it mm -hmm. um, because, you know, he directed it. It looks fantastic. It has my man Robert Pattinson in it. You guys know I love him. But, oh, man, it just – it missed the mark for me. I don't feel like this really, yeah, lived up to what he's capable of. So that much was, of um, didn't make sense. Who was in that movie? Who was the lead in that? Uh, Denzel uh, Washington's uh, was it Denzel episode. Washington? Yeah, he did so, much better in the creator than he did in that movie. So, <clears throat> no, it wasn't. It wasn't Denzel Washington. It was, no, his, his, son, son, his son, son. His son. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Denzel sorry. Washington's son was in this. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. played the lead. Yeah, yeah. It, he was fine. I, I had no problem with any of the performances. Yeah, um, the it, performances were okay. It's, it's just, just nothing yeah. stood out besides like I was like, oh, Robin Robert Pattinson's like not terrible. Okay. Yeah, speaking of somebody with a yeah. with a resurgence right now, it's him. Yeah, he's a great actor. People just needed to give him a chance. I mean, but I don't because he had to break away from Twilight. That was the problem. He had to yeah. get and away from. He was him. yeah. He was great in Lighthouse. Yeah. So, I think where Tanit got off on the wrong slit really was just um, the fact that it basically opened where you felt like you were missing the first reel of the movie. It opens with this like mega like action sequence shootout, but we have no idea what the hell is going on. We have no idea who's shooting at who, what what set the stage here, what the hell is happening. Like it it just felt like they it started in the middle of a really big scene and then backtracked the exposition and then went forward again in the back again. It's just it was so much all over the place. And I get that the concept was, you know, supposed to be mucking with time and all that you know like oh well you, you have to you know do everything in reverse to make you know this stuff happen like oh if you want to shoot a gun you're not going to pull the trigger you have to think about where you want the bullet to hit first and then it's going to come out backwards or it's just interesting concept not well executed agree yeah Agreed. Yeah, and, very, like, like conception, agree. conception was better this, executed. This was, yeah. uh, ironically, uh, the nail in the coffin between uh, Christopher Nolan and Warner Brothers' relationship. 
Um, oh yeah, the pandemic. It, it failed miserably, and they thought Warner Brothers thought that this would be their savior. Like this would do amazing regardless. People would find yeah. a way into the theater, and people were still like, "No, yeah, I they, don't, they pushed I don't the die. date back a couple of times." I believe so. Yeah. And so they, when they finally released it, uh, and it came out with a thud, um, Warner Brothers I think was pretty livid, and Nolan was like upset that they even released it at all. Like they should have just waited. I think, in his opinion. Right. And so they rushed it, and then uh, it went to uh, Video On Demand, or whatever you want to call it, streaming. And that pissed him off. Yeah. That it's pissed him off. And then uh, that was it. Like, he left, and he went to Universal. And the hilarious part is... And then won an Oscar. Wins an oh, Oscar. Oh, Oppenheimer. And, and they creates they could have they could have one of the largest grossing films uh, of that entire year. Uh, probably much to Warner Brothers' uh, annoyance, uh, and so much However, so that they, they, Barbie, at least. they they, they re- Barbie, yes, true. Yeah. They re-released uh, mm. Tenet uh, just recently in theaters for a yeah. week because they thought that they didn't give it a good shake. It's like, <laughs> duh. I mean, it's not a good film by any means. I don't recommend watching it. If if you have to skip one of his films, it's this one, yeah. and that's a shame because right. I felt like Denzel's son was really trying oh, his David. hardest. And putting himself out there uh, apart from from Denzel, and it really shows you how freaking old Denzel must be in order for his son to look like he's in his forties. You know. Well, actually, Denzel's turning seventy this year, or, or he already or he already turned seventy. Did he? Wow. Yeah. He yeah. does he's, not look it. Yeah, he's for lockdown age. crack, dude. Well, no, it does because Kevin looks like he's <laughs> around that age. What? What would you say? Would you say, Bonnie, I'm eighty years old? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> So when we celebrated your 40th, it was a lie. It was a lie. It was double that. Times <laughs> yeah. The times you buy true, Donald. Yeah. <laughs> I should have known when you said you needed some false teeth. I just thought you were joking. Back in the prohibition days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So Tenet. All right. Uh, Chris, what's your last one? Uh, my last film is by the Coen Brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably their most boring movie of theirs. Uh, Lady Killers. Yeah, man. I actually never saw Lady Killers. Um, so and, Lady and Killers. I was at ArcLight when that came out, but everybody was complaining about it. I mean, there is a cool the thing. Yeah, there's a cool thing. It was shot in Mississippi, mostly shot in, in, in uh, Nas Jazz, uh, Nat, Nat's Chess, Mississippi. You know, Mississippi is always hard because it's Mississippi. Uh, it's really cool, like uh, on the Mississippi River. Um, and my ass is, I ass is. Um, and uh, it, it's basically about it's it's another con movie actually. Um, it's about Tom Hanks. It has Tom Hanks in it, and, and it has um, uh, who else was in it? Uh, Marlon Wayans, J.K. Simmons. Um, and it's really uh, it's about like a Southern professor and his crew, and they pose as a classic uh, like music ensemble to uh, rob a casino. Um, and they do it, and they like plan the whole thing with like this uh, old lady uh, upstairs. Um, it's it's really a weird, boring movie. Nothing really happens in it. And I was like, Cohen's, what are you doing? Um, and I think it came right after what? Did it come right after. Um, My brother were out there, which was so good, and then it was like such a high, and then this came out, uh, and it was yeah, another one of those movies that was super underwhelming. And incredibly boring. Um, yeah, it was, it was built as a comedy, if I recall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it wasn't. A lot of the movies are built as comedies. Like, like Big Lebowski is a, 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 technically a comedy. Yeah. Brother Rock is a comedy. Yeah, but this one really wasn't funny at all. No, at all. Like, no. Yeah. Uh, not, not enjoyable. Not enjoyable in the in the least. Not enjoyable at all. Not even a yeah. minuscule of it. All right, Kevin. Pop this off. Very disappointing movie because you know I'm a fan of this particular comic book series, Green Lantern from Martin Campbell. Uh. Martin Campbell, who brought us two of the best James Bond movies of the last 30 years, Golden Eye and Casino Royale, and a really cool Legend of Zorro movie with Catherine Zeta Jones and the wonderful Antonio Banderas and Anthony Hopkins. And what this... happened here? What's that? What happened here? Well, 
creative uh, uh, it, studio interference. interference. Yeah, studio interference, lack of creative control, you know. And I can tell at Comic Con, looking back when he did the panel, two things I noticed. I knew Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds had something going on. The way they were kind of like, you know, you know, sitting next to each other, the way they were looking at the way Blake Lively was looking at him. But the other thing I noticed, Martin Campbell, you can tell his body language. He was like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Because he said he'd never done anything with this type of advanced visual effects before. And he wasn't familiar with the character, and he, he kind of just got thrown into it. So the passion wasn't there either. And yeah, he just he just lost control. You can tell he just lost control of the entire project and just went to hell in a handbasket. And it's just sad because this could have been DC's Star Wars, the DC universe's Star Wars, essentially, if it was executed properly. You're not wrong. Yeah. So sad. So sad. Yeah, end. yeah, good cast too. Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, Peter Skarsgård, Mark Strong, who was a good Sinestro, by the way. Yes, a great Sinestro. Sinestro. And uh, Warner Brothers should still try to do like uh, I would say do a mini series or something with him as Sinestro. I think that would be awesome. Like, or at least put him in the uh, the new Green Lantern series that's going to come up. That's supposed to have Guy Gardner in the lead. But we'll see. Yeah, isn't it two? Isn't it there two of them? It's Guy Gardner and. The black one. Oh, wow, what's his name? John Stewart. The black one. John, John Stewart. Stewart yes. Good, good yeah. lord, man. Yeah. The no, that's one. that's literally what. That's the two of them it's, uh, together. It's like I movie. I don't know. I don't I don't know about that. I I just knew about the guy Gardner um thing. Them talking about that, but I didn't know that they were going to go with John Stewart or not for sure. That's the last I heard. Is it was like it's like a like a two of them together as a it's a detective space detective show. That would be interesting. Actually, I I would enjoy that space detective show. Uh, particularly because Guy Gardner's very open and very loud, and John Stewart's very reserved and and more methodical in, in those manner speakings. Uh, you know, John Stewart would go into a bar and ask questions. Guy would go in and have a beer. <laughs> you know, there's two different ways of going about it. Uh, we've got a few comments, so let me ring these off real quick. Uh, Sabrina's here, so hello, Sabrina. Uh, let's see. Sean McGinn says, anybody looking forward to the upcoming Ripley series on Netflix? I thought the biggest problem with the talented Mr. Ripley was Matt Damon cast as Ripley. It should have been Jude Law or DiCaprio. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. Like, Matt Damon's... What year was talented Mr. Ripley? 1997, 98? I think it was right after, I think it was right after... Um... Goodwill Hunting. It was after that. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. 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 What's that? Like ninety-eight. What's like ninety-eight? Yeah, ninety-eight-ish. Okay. Uh, Sean McGee says, Kevin. Kevin, do you blame? Do you blame Jeff sure. Johns for trying to put too much into the film? Uh, if it's a yeah, a little bit of if, if he had that kind of control, uh, I don't think he had that much control over it at the time. But there, there are a lot of hands in the cookie jar when it came to this movie. A lot of hands in the cookie jar. Yeah. Yeah, and Sean McGean says, has a new Hal Jordan been cast yet? I don't believe Hal has, uh, in my, uh, to my knowledge, I don't think Hal's been cast. But uh, we definitely know that Guy Gardner's going to be Nathan Fillion. Uh, so that's mm-hmm. happening. Um, so that's exciting. And that could work. Actually. That could work. Oh, so, could work. Right, so, the, so the TV show is Hal and John. No, the Superman movie, Superman Legacy, it has Nathan Fillion. Yeah, that's Guy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Oh, the TV show is going to have Hal, not Guy. Oh, they switched to Hal now. Yeah, it's, yeah. Always, it's always been Hal. Yeah, it's supposed it? to be Hal, okay. Hal, Hal, yeah. Hal and John Stewart, I believe, yeah. together. Uh, so, two of the most boring Green Lanterns. Wow. Just put them together. Great. Wow. So, you cool. prefer, so you, I see. So, you prefer Kyle and, and, and Guy together instead? Uh, I prefer uh, Kyle, for sure. I think Kyle's great. And I think he would work really well with Guy. Um, I actually thought Guy and John worked pretty decent together too. Um, but Hal, no. No, 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 no. What about Jessica Cruz? You want Jessica Cruz instead? No, not at all. Uh, Simon Bass? <laughs> no, uh, his character is kind of racist in a way. And I hate saying that, but it's, it's weird. It just doesn't... It doesn't work. I honestly, I would be fine with an Alan Scott like uh, type but character a, being that, in there. That's a little different because his 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 his, his, his is the Wood Green Lantern, the magical Green Lantern. Yeah, his. Uh, <laughs> I always thought this was funny. They eventually 
they made Alan Scott gay in the comic books like in the 2000s. And they were like, yeah, let's just make the guy whose weakness is wood the gay Green Lantern. <laughs> Why would you do that? Like somebody in the conference room during like some type of discussion was doing this. You know, like, how about we make how about we make make him gay? <laughs> like that, you know, and then they were like, Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And he was like, Oh shit, they're running with it. Like <laughs> I was just joking. But they're actually going for it. I, I feel like Warner Brothers does a lot of that. Warner Brothers is very much a um, – they go by name recognition, name power. That's why uh, we got uh, Will Smith and everything for a while. And, uh, you know, just, like they're very loyal as far as like when it comes to an actor, if they make them money. They will continue to work with them over and over and over again, even to the detriment of the film itself, um, just because they believe in the name. And that that name equates uh, f financial success. And it doesn't always do that. Like Deadshot with Will Smith was not not the best choice. It wasn't a terrible choice, don't get me wrong, but not the best choice for Will Smith. It just didn't work out for either the character Deadshot or for Will Smith in the end. So. Or Idris Elba's version, not Deadshot, but kind of like adjacent Basically character. Deadshot, yeah. Yeah, Bloodsport. Bloodsport. 100% Deadshot. That is exactly Deadshot. They just did, couldn't say it because they were like, maybe Will will come back. And then the slap happened and they were like, shit, we could have just called him Deadshot. Never. Damn it. <laughs> like, we fucked. Or Slapshot. Or Slapshot. <laughs> slapshot. I heard one of those two is going to be in the Superman movie. Who? Will Smith? Is it or... the Bloodshot? No, no. Bloodshot or Bloodsport. Right? One of the two. Uh, Deadshot yeah, or Bloodsport? Right, yeah, one of them. That I, it's but, probably going to be Bloodsport, um, simply because Gunn created uh, that character within the universe of, of the DC Cinematic Universe. So that's technically his darling now. So he will want to carry on with that character. Yeah, but I don't think Suicide Squad and the first season of Peacemaker are canon. That's what he said. He said only the new season of Peacemaker is going to be in the universe. That makes an interesting uh, thought since uh, part of... Uh, Peacemaker's crew and the Suicide Squad showed up to uh, Billy Batson at the end of Shazam 2 and tried to recruit him. So how is that not part of that universe? Unless Billy Batson's no longer, Shazam's no longer part of that. They need to figure this shit out because, like, yeah. this isn't going to work for me if, if they're like, oh, no, 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 that's something separate, you know? Yeah, because I saw something where they're talking about how like there's a news cast of Superman getting shot by a kryptonite bullet. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Little Big Sean says weak effort suggestions. Uh, Sorcy boxcar Bertha Spielberg Sorcy. either Tintin or 1941 Hitchcock torn curtain Lucas uh, Phantom Menace just some quickies off the top of my head. Yeah, those are good ones. Uh, Sean McGee says, how about Kevin and Donald as Stuart and Gardner? Hmm. That could actually work. No, I like them better as, as uh, Thunder and... Lightning? Uh, no. no. Beetle. Black Licorice. Oh. And, yeah, or and sorry, Blue yeah. Beetle. Black Thunder turned into Black Licorice. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jeez. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but I created a web series called The Blue Beetle, Ted Cord's Returns. There's four seasons of it on YouTube. You can check it out under Rumpelspoon Productions on the YouTube page, the actual page where you saw this live show that you're seeing right now, that you're viewing right now, guys. Um, Sean says, uh, McGean says, actually, Donald, here's an irony for you. DC recently released a facsimile edition of the first appearance of Golden Age Green Lantern, Alan Scott, and in his 1940 origin appearance. Wow. Ain't that something. And uh, let's see. We've got Kevin saying a bunch of stuff, so we don't need to repeat it because he's saying it on there. But I think that's it, right? Did we go over everybody? Yes. Yeah. Everybody's done? See? <laughs> ah, competent. I pulled through in the end. There was a little rough there for a moment, but I pulled through. I also pulled out, too. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. I was just supposed to. I just want to thank everybody for, for being a part of today's show. I appreciate you. So thank you very much. And uh, I just want to thank Bonnie for, for popping in and being our special guest uh, this evening. So thank you, Bonnie.
appreciate that. Me again. And I want to uh, take time to thank uh, to thank uh, Uncle Arnie here, who uh, got me through. <laughs> Uncle Arnie, you're the greatest. Uh, but yeah, seriously though, uh, stay tuned next week. Next week, what's next week's topic, Kevin? I think it was something controversial. Oh yeah, it was, it was, it was like best something comedies. It's uh, yeah, I think it was. It was now. It was like uh, best farm films is what it is. So so next week we're talking about farm controversy, controversial farm films, farming films. I think. Um, and there's right, a lot Charlotte's of them. Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web is Charlotte's Web's one of them. Uh, oh, yeah, Charlotte's yeah. Web. There's, yes. there's a ton. Animal Farm, uh, Watership Down, I think. So you name oh. it. Like, they're, all, they're all over the place. Oh. Lenny. Lenny and uh, what's the, uh, Grapes of Wrath. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, true, true. So we got a ton. So we're going to be talking about that uh, next week. So please stay tuned for that. It's going to be a great one. Yeah. Um, and uh, that that's pretty much it. Uh, follow our sponsors. Follow uh, Half's Hot Sauce, halfshotsauce.com, um, or go to splatteredfrog.com. Type in the coupon code SHORTBOX for 20% off your order there, guys. And, uh, Chris, what's the name of your uh, travel agency that you work through? Lux Rally Travel. Spell that. L-U-X-R-A-L-L. Bye. Nice. Lux Bye. Rally travel if you want to reach me you can go to luxrallytravel.com slash chris turner um, and uh, i can hook you up with all the best places for afternoon tea or uh, movie filming movie tv lo- filming locations historical tours all the nerdy stuff that you get with, that you get with uh, travel all the nerdy um, stuff and more. Now, no fees no no never any fees charged ever um and That's great. Prices. That's great. So you, you guys hit Chris up definitely. Uh, he planned my trip that I did in Vegas recently. Uh, saved me a bunch of money, and I had a really excellent experience, uh, particularly at a few places. Uh, the uh, the all of the prostitutes he recommended were top notch. What? Just uh, only one of them ended up being stellar. a guy. Stellar. Uh, what? And, and even that, he just that that guy just held me. It was nice, uh, but. Uh, with, with that being said, thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys. And uh, if you're feeling thirsty. And perhaps you can have a sentimental but always highly charged rumble pop.